Years of safety testing, major precautionary steps, all to make sure that Waste Isolation Pilot Plan near Carlsbad was safe. Now, after 15 years, it appears kitty litter may have shut down the plant. Brian Luby investigates a bizarre theory on how the pet product may have caused a February radiation leak at WIP. Brian. Yes, Tom, we're talking about the type of cat litter you can buy at your local grocery store. The scientist says the cheap clay cat litter actually makes nuclear waste safer to ship, but he believes someone switched to a different type of litter, causing that leak inside this big room at WIP. Talk about opening a can of worms. Bet you didn't know the stuff that gives you a breath of fresh air next to the litter box also lets nuclear scientists breathe a sigh of relief. Ah, well, the reason you want cat litter in your litter box for your cat is the structure, the, the, the silicate mineral structure of these materials traps and stabilizes things like nitrate, uh, ammonia, urea, you know, the components of urine. Dr. Jim Conka, who once monitored WIP for years, recently addressed this idea on Forbes. Well, Jim says this is a fairly simple and customary process. He says they use a 55-gallon drum, similar to this one, and he says as they put in the nuclear waste, they put in traditional clay kitty litter right along with it. That's how it's supposed to go, at least. But Jim believes the people who packed some of the drums that went to whip, which then leaked, likely switched to an organic cat litter. He says it has a different chemical compound, which likely caused pressure to build up inside the drums themselves. He says proof is in the pictures, the fact that burn marks appeared around the edges of the drums, and the fact that the rest of the room is intact. Seeing that, he believes fault lies not with whip the company that brought those drums to WIP. Kind of, everyone loses sight that WIP performed brilliantly. It performed exactly as it was supposed to. And, and although, you know, it's a little mess, we've got to clean, clean it up and everyone's all upset, you know, no, there's no environmental concern, there's no health concern, um, there's no safety concern. WIP really did well. Well, that other company never called or wrote me back. Keep in mind, Jim says none of this would have ever been an issue if this room had reached capacity and been sealed up. There are lots of rooms like this. WIP, of course, is a final resting place for all of this waste, buried nearly a mile, half mile underground, in a salt basin that is nearly you know, impenetrable. 28 Hanford workers exposed to chemical vapors in the last two months. Some are still sick and worry about the long-term health effects. Tonight, the King 5 investigators expose how the federal government buried scientific evidence warning just how dangerous those vapors could be. As Susanna Frame reports in her continuing investigation, the human toll of Hanford's dirty secrets, sick workers are furious they've been kept in the dark. What have they done to you? Essentially ruined my life. They've literally destroyed me. Lonnie Poteet worked at Hanford for 12 years, and during that time, less than one hour on the job changed his life forever. Half hour, 45 minutes, you're breathing in some of the most toxic substances on the planet. Correct. The wind was carrying it right to me. In 2007, this hose on the left of your screen ruptured, spilling 85 gallons of radioactively contaminated chemicals onto the ground. Crews were evacuated, but hours later, Lonnie Poteet showed up for work completely unaware of the hazard. No one called to say, stay away. They knew I was coming to that pump. They knew it had malfunctioned. Why didn't they tell me? Once a standout football star, coach, and outdoorsman, Poteet can't do any of that anymore. I get these cancer growths on my head every now and then. The Department of Energy has admitted inhaling those unknown chemical vapors directly caused Lonnie Poteet's health problems, the worst of which is something called trigeminal neuralgia, a degenerative disease that suddenly and repeatedly shoots electric-like bolts through the face. It's considered one of the most painful conditions known to man. Uh, do you have any idea what... Go ahead. Was that a bad one? Yeah. During our interview, we witnessed the pain hit Lonnie several times. Can you elaborate a little bit more on, it sounds like this is... Go ahead. What's happening right now? I get these shots of pain. It's just daily living. <laughs> and how bad can that be? Sometimes I'm just, uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm down for the day I have to lay in the room and stay in the dark. And uh, sometimes it's all day. He isn't alone. We've met many Hanford workers with diseases caused by chemical vapors at the site. Don Slaw's breathing problems are so serious, he's on four liters of oxygen a night. 
Diana Gag is permanently disabled with brain damage and vision loss. Ed Bricker suffers from lung disease and skin cancers. At the beginning, none of them questioned their safety on the job. They'd been told, we've got your back at Hanford. Yeah, that's the first, that's the first thing they feed you, uh, is that it's safety first. Ten years before Poteet's accident, this Department of Energy study, the Hewitt Report, brought the workforce good news. It showed the vapor risk to workers does not exist. Chemical releases from the tanks are well below OSHA levels, and in most cases, respiratory protection isn't necessary. But we found at the exact same time this report came out, assuring the workers that all was well at the Hanford tank farms, the U.S. Department of Energy was conducting its own research at this lab in Richland. Their study found something very different, that the chemical vapors were extremely dangerous for the workers. This report showed that, yes, most vapor exposures do not exceed OSHA regulation, but that doesn't matter. Tank farm workers are at great risk of getting cancer and other chronic diseases from chemical vapors, and it's unclear whether cancer is induced after chronic exposure or perhaps after a single release. I was never told of anything like that. And as you can see... We showed Poteet the study which scientists at the Pacific Northwest National Lab finished a decade before his exposure. He said he would have insisted on wearing a respirator or air tank if he would have known. I sure wish that I had this because it would make a difference and it's, it, it really upsets a person to know that they could have done more to protect you, but you're just a number to them and they run you through and they'll hire another guy right behind me. We found the Department of Energy didn't make the report public, share the results with workers or with the federally chartered Hanford Advisory Board. It's their job to consider science and make recommendations to help keep workers safe. Are you saying you never saw this report? Uh, no, I, I didn't see that report. And should you have? Absolutely. Dr. Tim Takaro is a renowned toxicologist and medical doctor who served on the advisory board's health and safety committee when the scientists came up with the findings. It's very upsetting as an occupational medicine physician and public health uh, practitioner that an opportunity uh, for better protecting workers at Hanford uh, was missed, apparently. But I believe that we have to solve the vapor issue. At a public meeting in Richland last month, the head of the Department of Energy at Hanford, Kevin Smith, acknowledged the potential hazards from chemical vapors. We know that some vapors are very harmful. Some vapors can cause health issues. Some vapors can cause death. So, so the answer is some vapors can do that. Yet those in charge at Hanford in the mid-90s weren't admitting that and weren't sharing information that could have spared sick workers like Lonnie Poteet. They've taken my life and screwed it up. How much they've shortened it, I don't know. I feel a little, really betrayed. They lied to me. So why would the federal government keep all that information from the public and the workers? Late yesterday, the Department of Energy sent us this report. It's from the Harvard School of Public Health, also written in 1997, and it bashes that Pacific Northwest National Lab study. They called it unreliable and of no value. Uh, we've talked to several experts today, toxicologists, who say, you know, that's no excuse. If you have two differing studies, they both should have put out there. So mm -hmm. then the scientists can weigh in, the workers can think about their different options, mm -hmm. all in an effort to protect them. And as we know, the vapor issue is still not solved. And so maybe they should have uh, released this. I really feel for that one worker. It was very sad. Very, very, very sad. To be sad. There. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, thank you, Susanna. Susanna.